Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my multi-part tutorial series on linear algebra. So you may ask yourself, well, what is linear algebra? It is an essential branch of mathematics in pretty much every field, including chemistry, computer graphics, physics, economics, statistics, machine learning, engineering. And it is used to model many types of different natural phenomena, create unbreakable cryptography algorithms, maximize yield in agriculture, make stock market predictions. It's used everywhere, and most people are unaware of that. And mainly, it focuses on vectors, matrices, and linear transformation. And what is great about it is that it allows you to model relationships between multivariable inputs and outputs. And what I'm going to do is sort of bounce around a lot in this video. One thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some symbols. So if you ever see a symbol like this, it's an R, what it represents are all real numbers. And if you ever see something that looks like this, this symbol is saying that it represents an array of real numbers with three rows, the rows always come first, and two columns. This symbol down here with a, it's a V with a little arrow over top of it is going to represent in this situation a two-dimensional vector. And if we should come in and throw in another value, this would represent a three-dimensional vector. And a vector is going to have a direction as well as a magnitude. And now what I want to do is jump in and talk about different ways that we can manipulate vectors. Now the very first thing I want to talk about is scaling a vector. Scaling a vector involves multiplying all values in a vector by a scalar which is just a value with magnitude, but not a direction. So let's say we have a vector and we want to scale it by two. We are essentially just multiplying it. And you can see an example over here in a graph of exactly what would happen. This is the original vector and this is the scaled vector. If we wanted to add vectors, Let's go and let's just keep the 2, 3 here. And let's add a new vector y. Simply adding these together means that we will take the 2 and add it to the 4 and the 3 and add it to the 6, giving us a final answer of 6 and 9. Subtracting them works probably the way that you would guess that it would work. In this situation, we would just take the 4, subtract the 2 from it, take the 6, and subtract the 3 from it to get a final answer of 2 and 3. Now, dot product is going to take two vectors and return a scalar. Remember, scalar has magnitude, no direction. And you're going to designate that this is a dot product by putting a dot inside of here like that. And how you figure this out is you would take Vx times Yx plus Vy times Yy. And this, of course, is going to work out to being 2 times 4 plus 3 times 6. And this would continue on if you had a three-dimensional vector and you'd get a final value of 8 plus 18, which is equal to 26. Now, one thing that is very useful in regards to the dot product is it's going to allow us to find the angle between vectors. So let's say we want to find this angle right down here, D. Well, what we would do is we would say cosine of D is equal to the dot product of A and B, and you can see the values of A right there and B right there, divided by the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, 
Well, how do you calculate the magnitude? Well, I'm going to show you how to calculate magnitude of A. It is going to be equal to the square root of A1 squared plus A2 squared. And this is going to work out to be 6 squared plus 12 squared, square root of that. And then if we were to simplify this, I'm going to take you through the whole process. This is going to be 36 plus 144, which is equal to square root of 180, which we can simplify down into the square root of 2 times 90, which we further can simplify down into 2 squared times 45, which is further simplified down to the square root of 2 squared times 3 times 15, which is then simplified even further into the square root of 2 squared times 3 squared times 5. And then we can finally simplify this by getting rid of this 2 and this squared part. Multiply the 2 times the 3, which is going to equal 6 times the square root of 5. So that is the magnitude of A. So you can go and practice and figure out the magnitude of B. But what I'm going to do is just solve this. Okay, so we're going to get our dot product here. So this is going to end up being 6 times 9 plus 12 times 8 over the magnitude of A, which as I showed you, is 6 times the square root of 5 times, and the magnitude of B is the square root of 145. This is going to further simplify down to be 54 plus 96. And if we work these out, this will be 13.416 times 12.042 which is going to be equal to 150 over 161.555, which is going to be equal to 0.9285. Then what we can do is we can take the arc cosine of 0.9285, and that is going to give us our final radian value for our angle D of 0.3804. If we multiply that, then times 180 divided by pi, or 57.296, which is that value, that is going to tell us that the angle for D is 79 or 21.79 degrees. All right, so learned a whole bunch of things in that one little example. And some points that are important to know is if cosine of zero degrees is equal to one, then what that tells you is that the vector A and B are pointing in the same direction. If, however, cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero. That means that those vectors are pointing in opposite directions. And in the situation in which we had cosine of 180 degrees equal to negative one, that means that those vectors are perpendicular. And that moves us on to the cross product. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to take two vectors and then it's going to return a vector that is at right angles to both. And something else that's important to remember is that the if the cross product is zero, that means that the vectors are going to be pointing in the same or opposite direction. And the cross product is going to be at a maximum length when vectors A and B in this situation are at right angles. So if you want to calculate the resulting vector, 
using our two provided vectors, which is 2, 3, and 4, and b being equal to 5, 6, and 4. How you would do that is the resulting vector, cx, is going to be equal to ay, bz, minus az, by, and cy's value, c representing the resulting vector from this use of cross product is going to be az, bx, minus ax, bz, and cz is going to be equal to ax, by, minus ay, bx. And if we want to go and solve this, the resulting vector c is going to be 3 times 4 minus 4 times 6 and 4 times 5 minus 2 times 4 and 2 times 6 minus 3 times 5 which is going to give us a final vector of negative 12, 12, and negative 3. And you can see that plot right there on the right side of your screen. And this right here, this blue line, is going to represent vector A. This one right here is going to represent vector B. And this one right here sticking out really far is vector C. Something else that is important before I move on to matrices is that a unit vector is going to have a magnitude of 1. So let's say we have a vector to demonstrate this. And I'm going to leave it be A in this situation, but I'm going to give it different values. So it's going to be 3 and 4 in this situation. Well. If I want to go and get the magnitude of this, this is going to work out to be 3 squared plus 4 squared, just as I had shown you a couple seconds ago, which works out to be 9 plus 16, which is equal to the square root of 25, which of course is equal to 5. All right, to find the unit vector, what you need to do is to divide both of these parts of our vector by the magnitude. And you're going to represent the unit vector by changing it to a hat. So this is going to be equal to 3 over 5 and 4 over 5. But how do we verify that this is indeed a unit vector? Well, if we go and get the magnitude of it, we're going to find out that it has a value of 1. And so let's verify. So let's say we have 3 over 5, and this is going to be squared, plus 4 over 5, also squared, square root of course, and this is going to work out to being 9 over 25, plus... 16 over 25, which is equal to the square root of 25 over 25, which I'm sure you know is equal to 1. All right, so we did a whole bunch of different things here with vectors, and now I want to give just a brief overview of matrices so that you can see how important they are. Okay, so a matrix is just an array of numbers, or it could just be an array of number, all right? And this is what we would call a one by one array. And what the, these matrices are going to allow us to do is to organize data in a way that makes it easy to work with that data. And previously, I showed how to find values for X and Y using matrices, and I'm going to kind of review that right now. But if you think about it, whenever we are in my algebra tutorial or using basic algebra techniques, it's not that hard to go and solve maybe two or three equations. 
However, it is very hard to say solve 100 equations or 1,000 equations. And that is one of the benefits of linear algebra in general and working with matrices. So I showed you a one by one matrix. Here is an example of a two by two matrix. And again, we define our rows first, then our columns. And then this would be an example, say, of a three by three or three by two matrix. All right, so this is three by two. Again, rows, then columns. Now, a linear system is a system of linear equations with unknown variables that are linear, meaning at most they are raised to the power of one. Okay, so you're not gonna be seeing x squared and such, only x. So what I wanna do here is I'm just going to solve an equation using substitution as you may be aware of, and then I'll compare it to solving it using matrices so that you can see the difference. So let's say we have 2x plus 2y is equal to 10, and we have 3x plus 2y equal to 12, and I wanna solve this using substitution. Well, what I can do is I can say 2x is equal to 10 minus 2y, of course, we move this to the right side by subtracting it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both of the values on the right side by 2 so that I can get x is equal to 10 over 2 minus 2y over 2. And if I go and simplify that, that's going to give me x is equal to 5 minus y. And then what I can do is I can transpose everywhere I have an x over in this formula with this part and then solve for to find the value of y. So this will become 3 and then 5 minus y plus 2y is equal to 12. Fif this, if I multiply this through, is going to give me 15 minus 3y plus 2y is equal to 12, and this is going to give me 15 minus y is equal to 12, and of course I can then find the value of y is equal to 3, and then I can take this value of y, plug it in here, and find out that the value for x is equal to 2. All right, and you could then verify by plugging in the value of two up here and the value of y right here up here and see that this is indeed true. But I wanna do the same exact thing now using matrices. A Couple things you need to know before you proceed with doing so. Now this, well, you know what? I'm gonna bring this back and I'm going to delete just this part. All right, so we have our equations here. Now, there are different types of matrices. If I was to go and create a matrix, and I would use this coefficient and this coefficient right here, how I would line them up is I would put two and two right there, then I could take the three and the two and put it right there. And this is what we call a coefficient matrix. Well, but I'm leaving behind my 10 and my 12, and I can't solve system equations without those. So I'm going to create two and two and three and two. However, I'm gonna put my 10 up here and my 12 right there and draw a line between it. And this is what we call an augmented matrix. All right, because we have everything here now that we can use to solve our equations. Another thing you need to know is there's something that is called an identity matrix. And all that it is is it is going to have ones in the diagonals and zeros every place else. So that is an identity matrix and this is an identity matrix as well. Okay, so that's the difference or that's exactly what an identity matrix is. Now why I told you about identity matrices is to solve system equations, you do so with matrices by converting the coefficient matrix into an identity matrix. And the values that are left on the right are your values for X and Y. 
So I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this right now. So what we are simply going to do is I have my matrix right here. And the very first thing you want to do whenever you are trying to solve a system of equation using matrices is you want to convert A11 into A1. A11 is right here, row one, column one. Okay, so that's where that comes from. And how you do that is by taking every value in row one and multiplying it by the reciprocal of the value of A11, or one over the value of A11, or whatever you want to think of it as, and then you're going to put that value in row one. Okay, so what's going to happen here, and I decide to move this over, we are going to go and get two, multiply it times the reciprocal of two, which is one half, do the same exact thing once again for the second row or second column, and then also do it for 10 times one half. We're not gonna do anything on the bottom though. Those values are going to stay exactly as they are. Now, if we do this, this is going to give us a value here with our new matrix of one, one and five, and three, two, and 12, exactly like that. Well, now what we need to do is we need to convert A to one or the value in the second row, first column into a zero. How do we do that? We use an equation again. And this new equation is going to be row one values times negative A to one like this plus R2 and put the result in R2. So if we should do this, what we would end up getting is we're gonna have the same values here on the top. So one, one and five. Then we're gonna have the value of in row one, which is one times negative three. And we're gonna run out of space here, I can tell. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. Plus three. And then we're gonna have again row one times negative three and that plus two. And then we're going to have five times negative three plus 12. And if we do all of that, that is going to give us exactly what we're looking for, which is one and a zero and one and a negative one and a five and a three. All right, so the next thing we need to do is convert a two two into a one. And the formula we're gonna use is this one right here again. Except we are going to replace the ones with the twos in this situation. So I'm gonna do that up here. So the new formula is going to be everything in row two divided by the value in A22 and put it inside of row two. And if we do that, what we're gonna end up having is zero divided by negative one, negative one divided by negative one, and negative three divided by negative one. And then we'll have a one and a one and a five. And this is going to end up being equal to one, one and five, and zero, one and three. And the only thing left to do now is to convert this up here into a zero. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna use this formula, which is row two times negative A12 plus R1 and put the result in R1. And if we do that, we're gonna end up having zero times negative one plus one, zero down here, and one times negative one plus one one over here and three times negative one plus five and the three stays down here. And that gives us a final answer for our matrix problem of one, zero, zero, one, two, and three. And what that tells us is that X has a value of two and Y has a value of three. And there you go.
And that is how you solve system of equations with matrices. And in upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how to do so much more. So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.